Welcome to Town Administrator's Report. I'm David Watts, Jr., and with me is our Town Administrator, Steve Mayo. Steve, welcome. Thank you, David. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. We're uh, about to embark on holiday season 2022. Holiday season and an intervening town meeting in between. <laughs> and and that is exactly what we're going to be talking about today is the uh, town meeting that's scheduled for this Saturday, November 19th. Uh, the call to order will be at 9 a.m. And it will be in the Veterans Memorial Auditorium at the Galvin. Absolutely. It is, it is nice to be back in the Galvin. It is much more conducive to presentations and, and comfort of uh, for those attending for town meeting. I mean, the, the field house is great at the high school and has a bigger population, I guess, but it, there's something really great about being in that room at the Galvin. Well, and those of us who are stuck outside don't have yes. to deal with either extreme yeah. heat or extreme yeah. cold. There will be no outside this year. We'll be inside. <laughs> <laughs> the the um, uh, biggest thing about this town meeting is um, only six articles. Yeah, it is, um, you know, I, I, I'll say we do such a great job, we don't need many articles. But no, um, I think it's just the way it happened this year. We've had um, a number of um, regular town meetings in the fall that, you know, other than what is required, you know, there are, there are not often a lot. Most of the business is done in the spring, mm -hmm. traditionally. Yeah, we, we seem to have a longer one last year because we also had the Vogue Project and, exactly. and a couple of things like that. Exactly. But, so. it, but don't be, just because the number of um, articles maybe isn't lengthy, there still could be any article that could trigger a, <laughs> a, a conversation that lasts for a while. And that's what town meeting's all about. So. This is true. This yeah. is true. So, but, uh, but as we say, there are only six, and uh, we'll go through them just to uh, let people know what to expect. Um, the first one, Article 1, is Report of the Fiscal Year 2022 Budget. Yes, this is actually a um, article that we have every year, um, and it is actually required um, by both the charter and I believe required by state law, where the the town really needs to give kind of a uh, a rundown of what happened last fiscal year. So for for those of us, um, and I'm among them, what fiscal year are we talking about? We're talking about the year that began July first, two thousand twenty one. That ended June 30th, 2022. Um, so we're really going to talk about how things panned out on the budgets that we voted on way back in April 2021 or May 2021 when we met. And um, myself and um, the school department have compiled um, every account, mm -hmm. you know, every department. Mm -hmm. And in the back of your budget, um, your town meeting book right here, um, which I, a lot of people like to keep. Mike, I have them all, and I write in them, so I know exactly <laughs> what happened. But in the back of that is a uh, the financial report um, from the from the town administrator's office, talking about what was appropriated, expenditures, and balances at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So what is really interesting about this report is that, let's say, for instance, in uh, well, we'll we'll give actual numbers here, in. In my department, the, the uh, town council department, you know, we appropriated money for salaries. Um, we appropriated money for um, purchase of services. And think about that would be any experts that we maybe hired. Maybe we mm -hmm. had to hire mm -hmm. some outside lawyers or um, engineers or something like that. Um, we have materials and supplies. Um, we still use a little bit of materials and supplies. No, at least paper. In, paper <laughs> in, 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 uh, in point. And um, kind of a catch-all, we call it sundry, sundry charges. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So those all add up and was approved by town meeting back in 2021, a little over $503,000, okay, to run that department, including salaries for a number of, number of people. We spent a little uh, over 500000 so what happens to that 2600 that's left over? I mean, we don't keep it. It doesn't stay in the department. It actually goes back to the town as revenue back into their general fund. So we do that uh, accounting analysis for every department, mm -hmm. including you know the accounting department, IT department, treasurer's department, legal department, tax collector, assessors, police, fire, DPW, um, the insurances, building department, um, 
you name it, recreation. We do that analysis in every department. Mm -hmm. So the two items that I'd ask you to, you know, when we do make the report, the two items to really be concerned with, or the two numbers, I should say, is how did the department do yep. in all of its, uh, in all of its uh, spendings, and what money was, let's call it, carried forward or carried over to the next fiscal year mm -hmm. because things just couldn't get done. Right. In the fiscal year, in the fiscal year before, because we ran out of time, um, uh, because of weather, right. we ran out of time because material and supplies didn't come in, or you know, um, in one case, there's an audit that was going to be done that got pushed into the next fiscal year. So, this is really interesting, and we go through it. It's interesting to me. I, I, I'm not so sure how interested it is to the to the public that's there, but we actually go through each department and we'll give a little explanation at town meeting about it and but the bottom line is is that you know the budgets that were approved for all of the town departments um, you know sp did not spend everything that they were allotted to so my philosophy has always been over the years that we do not um, I, I don't want to see any of my departments rushing at the end of the year to you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna load up on copy paper because right. this is gonna happen. Right. I, I don't like that way to spend do the it. remainder. I, of I the don't budget. like that way at all. So, what my departments and my department heads know that, and then mm -hmm. not every community is like that. So, based on all the departments for last year, they actually returned out of you know out of the the budgets that you know total you know close to a hundred million dollars. They actually returned to the public, uh, to the to the to the cash for the town. A little over a million dollars, so it's a million one that goes back into the back into the the coffers of the town and and really goes into our free cash account. Even the snow and ice account. I was going to go there returned because, money this year because we've <laughs> talked about it many many times about how low it was when you first became yes, yes. town administrator <laughs> and what it's up to now. And for the previous fiscal year, uh, the town had uh, appropriated. Um, Eight hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yes, and we came in at eight forty nine, eight eighty eight, yeah. and forty eight. You can't cents. get any closer than that, <laughs> can you? Yeah. But but you know, in past years, that would have been. Oh well, now we have to vote more money for the, right, to and and that and that's kind of that's spent. the one line item during the year. Yeah. That we can increase. Yep. Um, without going to town meeting and, and actually without going to the town council. It's really a finance committee item. Um, and that's that's mass general law. That's not me. And I hate going for those snow and ice overdrafts. <laughs> um, but you're right. When we was when we when that was um, 15 years ago now, that line item was um, funded at 293,000. Now granted, it was cheaper back then as right. well, but that right. was a little bit low for what it was at the at the time. So um, even so, even yes. so, but we've increased that every year. Um, the DPW director will tell me that, um, and rightly so. Really, Steve, we probably should be around a million, a million one, a million two. But I'll hold that up to him this year, and I'll say, well, hey, you were pretty, pretty good last year. <laughs> we used to, and you still returned to under eleven. And and we had a fairly average snowfall yeah. last year. So fairly average, but um, in that in that regard, snow is uh, snow is kind of changing. I mean, yes. the, 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 there is you know the the uh, we get some seems like me we get bigger, quicker uh, storms that go away quicker. Mm -hmm. But as you know, we've had years, we you know, within the past few years that we've been buried, mm -hmm. and uh, which mm -hmm. have caused a lot of issues. So that is really the luck of the draw. But um, we have um, done really good, really well on that. A couple I would like to um, to point out on you is that um, we did return, uh, or the the town did return each department, and it's broken down by departments or by areas at the end of the book. On our health insurance yep. department, um, that has been an area we, we have consistently returned money to the town. Um, this year, close to $500,000 and a budget of a little a little over $12 million. Mm -hmm. And when we budget for health insurance, uh, and remember, we budget that. Our budget is done in April and May, um, and I hold on to that particular budget until mm -hmm. the end. Mm -hmm. That is based on who we have for employees then. What, um, uh, what employees are on health insurance, mm -hmm. um, what retirees 
are on health insurance, and what is the mix of plans that we have mm-hmm. within mm-hmm. those people in there. Our health, our uh, group insurance department, our human benefits department has done a great job of working very closely with um, our employees to say, you know what, you really don't need that plan. Or, or I should let me put it a diff- different way. You're paying, and employees pay for health insurance too. They pay a percentage. They pay 20% in most cases, 20 or 25. The insurance plan that you have, you're paying, you know, $1,000 a mm-hmm. month for, let's mm-hmm. say. You could get all of the same benefits, mm-hmm. all the same doctors, all mm-hmm. the same hospitals, and pay $800 a month just by managing that plan differently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you as an employee, you're going to save money. And the town, as paying for the, you know, the difference, right. is also going to save money. And I'll tell you, our staff works... Um, person by person, mm-hmm. plan by plan to take care of that. So that does make a big difference. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, we go into health insurance, for instance, not knowing if we do get new hires, mm-hmm. you know, what are they going to take? Will they come right. with their own insurance? Because right. some will. Do they need that? People that are retirees, you know, what sadly happens with retirees, mm-hmm. some pass away, and then we're not, not paying for the health insurance anymore, mm-hmm. obviously. Mm-hmm. So that's that's in flux. Um, so, you know, we go line by line and look at things that are happening and what's going on for next year. And I will tell you, when we carry carry money forward or money that we couldn't expend in the current fiscal year, mm-hmm. so those projects mm-hmm. that were approved mm-hmm. and expected maybe got done in July mm-hmm. or, or August or what have you, a lot of that happens in DPW projects because of weather in the spring. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. didn't happen. This year, supplies didn't come in, a permitting slowdown with, mm-hmm. you know, like the, the pickleball courts, that whole floral way area, right. but held back because the Department of Environmental Protection at the state level mm-hmm. um, changed their rules mid-game, and we had to change our a little bit and get their approval, so things slowed down. Mm-hmm. Um, automobiles don't come in that have mm-hmm. been ordered, mm-hmm. so we have to wait till the next fiscal year. So that's what happens in our side of the ledger. Right. Normally it's not that it's not salaries that are paid for or things right. like that. It's usually projects and items and things Capital like that. Capital items. Capital items yeah, is yeah. a big part of it. But you know, all in all, you know, we've had a very good history of um, the department heads really eyeing their budget. Um, mm-hmm. town accountant Kevin Gill does a fabulous job um, you know, reviewing them on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. I mean I review them not to the same level that Kevin does, but I I look at them every week myself, and um, really all through the year we have a very good idea right. of where anybody's going to be and how we're going to end up. So really kudos and a great job to them. So, Absolutely. Um, Article 2, Board of Assessors' use of free cash to compute yes. the tax rate. We see yes. this one every year. You see this one every year. And, and what this is is um, it's a little bit kind of difficult to, to explain, and let mm-hmm. me see if I can again try to do it. So we know what we're going to get for taxes, okay, every year. That's a given. That's a mm-hmm. real easy formula to figure out. Um, we ha- we know by the time that we are setting the tax rate, which the town council just did mm-hmm. last night or Monday night, we know what we've gained in new growth because that's been, you know, our, our very talented assessor has done all that work. Mm-hmm. It's been sent to Department of Revenue, and Department of Revenue says um, yes. This makes sense to us. Mass has to sign, Massachusetts signs off on it. So that's all done. We also base our budget on what we're going to get for other items, mm-hmm. uh, other items of revenue, like building permit fees, like um, fees for uh, we get for meals tax, like fees we get for hotel tax, mm-hmm. um, like interest we get on our accounts. So, uh, you know, uh, people buying, people paying for lien certificates, uh, people buying pit passes. This all goes into a general fund, and it's Mm -hmm. all used to balance all the budgets. So when we set the budget, um, and when we set these numbers up in July and August, you know, our philosophy has always been to be very conservative, to say, and we have financial policies this effect, to say that, you know what, we think we're going to from all of these items, including mm-hmm. excise tax, which you pay on your automobiles, we think we're going to bring in about $7 million a year, okay? 
Traditionally, over the last few years, we bring in a little bit more, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's because Wakefield restaurants are doing very well. Um, we're seeing this year, in particular, hotels are being used again. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing hotel tax. You look around and you see the building boom. A lot of permit fees are coming in. Mm -hmm. So that increases our income in those areas. So if we went out, we balanced a budget thinking we'd get in seven million, and we get in eight and a half. That extra run one and a half actually goes into the coffers. It doesn't go away because we didn't figure it, uh, figure on it, or didn't account for it. Right. With the with what we file with the state. But it means that we couldn't, we did not use those funds, even though maybe we anticipated them. Um, and we'll slowly get there. We're increasing that every year. Again, we don't want to have a shock. Mm -hmm. So we use what's called free cash. We use our savings mm -hmm. because, to me, the worst thing for me to have to happen on the budget is to go back and say to the um, finance committee and to the town council, um, you know what? Um, you know how when we set the budget, we figured we were going to get um, $10 million in uh, in uh, uh, other revenue? Yep. Geez, we only got eight. So, um, and we're projecting only eight. So we're going to have to use $2 million in free cash that we didn't account for to actually balance the budget. Uh, and we can do that in the spring if we need to. So what we do is we're a little bit conservative on the, on the revenue end, use the free cash that mm -hmm. we have to balance the budget. So, hey, we're all set. Department of Revenue is happy. And more importantly, we can send out the tax bills <laughs> so everyone can get those in their mailbox to pay for the February and the March tax bill. So that is an article that, again, happens every year. Right. It's um, those two, uh, although, and the free cash amount can be, could be zero. We might mm -hmm. not need it. It could be more. It could be $4 mm -hmm. million, could be mm -hmm. $2 million. But the bottom line is at the end of when this all is done, we want to make sure that we certainly have enough money um, to cover all right. of the items that people voted for and right. pushed for during the budgetary process, and that we retain adequate reserves. Mm -hmm. And at the tri board meeting, we talked about that for the next couple of years, we feel, because of you know inflation and things like that, will probably be a little bit, um, uh, I'll use the word wobbly in our, <laughs> in our reserves. Um, but I'm actually a little bit more um, positive than um, the finance committee is. I think our reserve is going to increase a little bit more right. you know, over the next couple of years. And we're going to be in that 10% range, which is, I think, good government. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's what the, mm -hmm. the bond council wants. It's what the Wall Street wants. And part of this process is why we have the AAA bond rating. So I was just going to go there. So very closely with everybody works out well. Article three, appropriation amendment. What what specific okay. appropriation to the current budget okay. is being amended here? Whoever the maker was of that motion back in April of two thousand and and uh, twenty two, um, as you know, we have the capital article in our Springtown meeting. Yes, okay? and we do a lot out of tax levy. Maybe we borrow for some of it, um, which we did not this year. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have certain um, capital items that are attributable to either um, water department or the mm -hmm. sewer department. Mm -hmm. So when I made that motion back in uh, April or May, whenever that date was, I said the the sewer portion and the would be paid out of sewer retained earnings and the water portion would be would be paid out of water retained earnings. Earnings, so it would um, be paid out of, um, excuse me, be paid out of receipts, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, not retained earnings. So I almost did it again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I said I said receipts before. It right. really should have come out of their reserves because we kind of do water and sewer right. um, uh, capital projects out of the reserves, so it doesn't you know increase your water bill. We've right. already set that. So that that is just an accounting. Um, era to fix, and um, as I've said, and as I will say at uh, town meeting, and um, people will um, be sick of hearing this. <laughs> this just proves what my wife has told me for years, for 37 years. I'm not infallible, and I did make a mistake. <laughs> so that was completely my mistake. Doesn't okay. So it's this, an is, fixing error. A this is fixing mistake. a Steve Mayo mistake. This is fixing a Steve Mayo mistake. Absolutely. Okay.
You heard it here. You heard it here first, yeah. <laughs> Article 4, petitioning the legislature to pass special legislation establishing for Wakefield a means-tested senior citizen property tax exemption. Yes. This is... is how does this fit in with the current um, senior circuit breaker exemption that exists in town? This is extending that. Okay. So so really, um, in, in 2018, the... Um, town meeting in April of 2018, town meeting approved this concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what this concept concept is, is that there are people that, based on income, and mm -hmm. remember, t a taxation of a, the management of a city or town is based on, you know, asset, your home, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not necessarily your income, your mm -hmm. ability to pay. So we could have a show on that someday to talk mm -hmm. about maybe that's mm -hmm. not the way to run a railroad. But in any event, in 2018, uh, Victor Santanello, our assessor, brought to me and to the town council a concept that he had been working on and actually had piloted in another community that he works in, where if you as a senior qualify for the state income tax circuit breaker, mm -hmm. which is what that means is that if your income is at a certain level, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about that in a second, you will actually get a credit off of your state taxes owed for... Um, up to eleven $1 hundred and seventy dollars at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So, in order to qualify that, you must be sixty-five or older, and you have to have income levels where, if you make sixty, you can't make more than sixty-two thousand for a single individual who is not the head of house household, seventy-eight thousand for a head of household, ninety-three for married couples filing a joint return. What this basically does is give you a credit off of your income taxes that you mm -hmm. paid to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Great program, and, you know, you could get up to, you know, $1,100. It's just to round it off, okay? So what we thought we would do here is say, you know, people are also hurting on their income taxes, okay? So let's do this. Let's say if you qualify for the income tax credit from the state, which means you've been vetted, you have to file yeah. the forms, yeah. file your tax returns, okay? We sh we should, as a community, we should also give you a break on your income taxes, mm -hmm. provided that you makes you have some other issues like your home isn't worth more than eight hundred eighty four thousand dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so what happens is if you qualify, the board of assessors can also decide to match that mm -hmm. qual that. So if you're getting eleven hundred from the state, based on all these other things, and you could get eleven hundred from the town of Wakefield. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do we pay for that? That that money that went around, and we have two, now we have an average of 225 taxpayers a year that take advantage of this. Mm -hmm. This is really really excellent stuff, and it costs the town of Wakefield about 228 thousand dollars. So they get about a thousand dollars a year on average. Mm -hmm. That 228 thousand dollars that we don't collect from these 228 taxpayers mm -hmm. that qualify gets spread around the rest of the residential tax base. Okay, so the average taxpayer to allow someone to live more gracefully in their home and mm -hmm. our, our valued seniors, um, probably about twenty-eight bucks a year on your taxes, a couple of bucks a month. So, great program. We've had great success with it, and um, Victor and our senior center staff did a great job in sending this out mm -hmm. and expanding this to an interesting community. Unfortunately, the state legislature does not like to give us permission to tax ourselves. You know, like, should say that again. They don't like to give us permission mm -hmm. to tax ourselves. So we could only put it forward for three years. It had to sunset. So we're coming back with this because people need this probably now more than mm -hmm. ever with everything else. And there is state legislation that's been filed, that's been mired in committees for a couple of years right now. We're hoping that the state will come up and adopt a program very similar to this. Mm -hmm. And then we could just opt into that and not have to come to town meeting every sure. three years to get this done. Sure. But it's a great program. It, it helps countless, you know, fee, uh, families on this. And I'm very proud that Wakefield mm -hmm. stood up and unanimously voted for this in 2018. And many stood there and said, yes, I'm willing to spend 28 more dollars a year to help Mrs. Smith or mm -hmm. Mrs. Jones next mm -hmm. door to me mm -hmm. stay in her home a little bit easier. Great, says volumes about this community. Absolutely. Um, we're running short on time, so uh, two things real um, 
Article 6, adoption of a new Article 5 of Chapter 175 yeah. of the General Bylaws about renaming streets. Right. What, what this is is that, you know, occasionally a group of, will, will come up and say, you know, we want to rename our street. And it's really for streets that have been mm -hmm. named, you know, in named for a while. Mm -hmm. So the planning board felt that there should be some sort of a process to go to because we really didn't have one. Right. So that's what this is all about, creating a process to come in and kind of state your case and then police and fire will weigh in. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't mm -hmm. want to have... You know, I live on Jackson Lane. We don't want to have someone to put a Jackson Street yeah. because there'd be confusion. We have enough of that already. So, we do. So, you know, we're trying to change Greenwood those Ave things. and Greenwood Street. Yeah, exactly. You know, depending on which yeah. side of the tracks you're yeah. on, pizza delivery people get, yeah. get exactly. messed up all the time. <laughs> and then Article 5, easement to MGLD, that one's probably going to be the one that elicits the most conversation. I, I think so. And what this is is that the um, Wakefield um, with... Uh, the town of Wakefield, um, and really the region in general, and wonderful to have our own municipal gas and light department, is really looking to make our buildings totally electric versus, you know, oil or, mm -hmm. I won't say coal, I don't think we have any coal anymore, I know we don't, oil or gas, natural gas. It's much cleaner power, it's mm -hmm. much better for the environment. So what the gas department has stated is that they would like to create an energy farm on Hemlock Road, you go past Landrigan Field, almost to the guard shack, to where the um, uh, vocation, into the vocational school parking area, yeah. and to the right is town-owned Wakefield land, and put in there an energy park, where, which would be fed from solar arrays on either the existing high school or the new high school. Same thing for the vocational school, although there will be a new vocational school on the new vocational school, and from their solar arrays on their roofs, they will feed this. They'll not only feed their their buildings, mm -hmm. but they will also feed this energy park where energy will be stored in batteries. Mm -hmm. So in case there's an emergency, you know, and, you know, the grid goes down, right. they could, you know, the schools could operate, okay? Um, there'll, there'll also be charging stations installed at each school for cars and what have you. So this is really a great move to kind of move us more green and mm -hmm. what have you. Light department is doing this whole thing. What they will need from the town of Wakefield is an easement to use this mm -hmm. land. Because this land was taken, well, was, was, I would say, deeded to the town and accepted as parkland, the town will then, assuming that town meeting votes for this, the town will then have to petition the state legislature to say, hey, we're using this land for this purpose, mm -hmm. even though it's parkland, um, and get approval for that. So this is going to be a little bit of a two-pronged approach. But I think there will be some, some questions about that. The easement area is about an acre on a, right. par, on a parcel that's much larger than that, probably seven or eight acres. And um, there will be a nice presentation at mm -hmm. town meeting. In fact, um, if you go on the Light Department website, you can see a little video on this. Mm -hmm. So it's all about clean energy um, and uh, supporting both schools in case there is a, uh, a power outage. The park will have a gas power generator mm -hmm. as an emergency backup to the emergency battery park, just in case. Um, and um, both schools will be entirely electric, which is great for the community uh, at large. And by creating this park here, both the vocational school and the new high school will not have to build or, or have installed their own generators. Mm -hmm. Uh, for backup power, which would save mm -hmm. each project over a million dollars each. Mm -hmm. So it, mm -hmm. it seems like it's a very, very good uh, project that is supported by the light department, supported by the uh, finance committee, supported by the town council, um, and supported by the planning board. So I think all, uh, but but I think it's it's a new concept. It's confusing. Right. There will be some changes in that lot. There will be some trees that will be removed. And Light Department is committed to replanting them elsewhere, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. there'll be some questions, I'm sure. But it's worth a discussion. It certainly is. You know, and and another advantage to having our own power company. Absolutely, absolutely. So and this Saturday, November 19th, uh, 9 a.m. is the call to yep. order. Please come down. Please participate and vote. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all there. And it's at the Galvin School. And it's at the Galvin, Galvin School in the auditorium. Thank you. So thank you very much. We'll see you next time.